Hello and happy Thursday. So I have been gone for a while. Um, I had a family tragedy and uh, it's been a while so I haven't really had the, I guess you could say the oomph to do a video for a while, but I'm back now. I have a lot of comments to answer, but I really appreciate those of you who uh, reached out to me. It was a, a particularly, probably the hardest time of my life. So, um, but uh, either way, I'm moving on and life goes on and here we are again. And tonight, and it is uh, evening here, um, I'm going to show you a 1955 telephone directory. This is very interesting for lots of reasons. First of all, we're going to look at how phone numbers were in a small community. So this is for um, Ethel, Mississippi, Weir, Mississippi, McCool, Mississippi. These are for little towns that had the single service back then, which meant you only had to dial no more than four numbers to reach your party. And we'll see how that works. Like in the bigger cities, they would have um, like three letters and a number. Like, you know, Sh Shiler or, or whatever, SCH or something like that. They would have a three, a, a memorable name, Riverside, for example, you know. And then so you would have, if, if you're at Riverside 0924, you would dial RIV 0924. So, but a little town... In Mississippi, the 1955 only had three to four numbers, as we'll see. This also has the yellow pages in it, so we got a lot to look at. This was put out by Southern Bell. This went to um, Mims Boswell, and she lived on 310 North Natchez. And and uh, forgive me for butchering this word. This is um, Kosciusko, Kosciusko. I'm from Alabama, and I don't know how to pronounce this Mississippi town here. So, those of you from Mississippi, help me out here. Is it Kosciusko? Because, I mean, I live next to Opelika, so, I mean, I understand how uh, towns, uh, you know, have, you know, hard to pronounce names. And we don't say Jordan Hare Stadium, we say Jordan Hare, so, yeah. But anyway, that's the small town in Mississippi. Another thing that I want to point out is this was during segregation. So you will, or we will see uh, evidence of segregation in this phone book because it certainly existed in Mississippi. Now, my next phone book review will be a 1955 phone book from a whole different place in Colorado, and we'll see what the differences are. But for the time being, let's focus on this 1955 phone book. Um, if you are interested in looking at phone books from the past to understand... Uh, a little bit more about our recent history. I have another video. I can link in the description for my Victoria, Texas uh, 1979 phone book. So now that's very fascinating. But this is much farther back in time. So we have on the cover this nice 50s style picture of a pretty young lady on the telephone. And it says, it means so much to keep in touch. So this is the October 1955. Use long distance, it's fast, and the cost is small wherever you call. Just ask for long distance. See pages 1 to 4 for index, telephone, service calls, emergency calls, and other important information. And as we go through the phone book, you'll get a little bit of a lesson of how to use the phone. And Now, I grew up, I'm a Gen Xer, so I grew up using rotary telephones like this. So a lot of this isn't going to be new to me, but some of you might find this very interesting if you are interested in history and how things worked not so long ago. Um, isn't there someone far away? You'd like to call long distance today. When you're miles apart from someone you love, long distance is the quickest, easiest way to keep in touch. In business too, when time is money, long distance saves both. Long distance is fast, personal, and the cost is small. And remember, your calls go through quicker when you give the long-distance operator the out-of-town number. And then she doesn't first have to consult information in the distant city. For listing the numbers you call frequently, call or write our business office for a handy booklet. So here we go. Kaski Usko? Kaski Usko? Or is it? 
I mean, I have no idea how that's pronounced. Ethel, McCool, and Weir. And we got our index. Business transactions with the company. How to place out-of-town calls. General information. How to use the dial telephone. Kosciuszko subscribers listings. Ethel, McCool, and Weir subscriber listings. Classified telephone directory. And then it gives you information on service calls. And how did you place a long distance call? How did you place any call back then? The simplest way to do it was just to dial zero, turn the little dial to zero, and then speak to an operator and have the operator request the operator to connect you to the party in the city that they're in. And that was usually all it took. So, and it gives you emergency call information, it even tells you what to say. I want to report a fire, for instance. Uh, what do you not see here? There was no 911. I don't believe 911 even existed until maybe it was the late 60s or the early 70s. So you had to actually dial up uh, your fire, police, etc. Business transactions with the company. Our aim is to render a service that will be satisfactory to our customers. Though difficulties will sometimes occur despite all of our efforts to avoid them. On page one, information is shown regarding placing long distance calls, securing numbers not listed in the directory, reporting telephones out of order, and making emergency calls. Other matters, including business transactions, should be taken up with the business office either by telephone, personal visit, or letter. Gives you information the business office is on East Jefferson Street. Uh, and the hours, Monday through Friday, it's closed on Saturdays. Um, they didn't even put Sunday because everything was closed on Sunday. That was just a given. You didn't even ask. Sunday was in the deep south in 1955. Sunday was taken seriously. And oftentimes, and those of you in the south will know this, and this still exists in some cases, Wednesdays, most things shut down at noon for church. Uh, telephone calls to the business office, bills and payments, gives you instructions for long-distance calls, rates and information concerning um, long-distance overseas telephone service. So if you had a, a relative in the Army and they were in Korea or wherever, um, how to place out-of-town calls, station-to-station -station calls, how to place a station-to-station -station call, a person-to-person -person call. That's what most of us were doing. A person-to-person -person call is one where you ask for a particular person or extension telephone reach through a private branch exchange, which is what this, this is a private, this is a single branch exchange. This, this town is so small, this area is so small, we only got one branch in this exchange. Um, it tells you how you're charged and so forth and how to place the call. First, give the operator the name of the place you were calling. Second, give the name and telephone number, if known, of the person you were calling. Otherwise, the name and the address, if known, of the per of the called party. For example, Mr. J. W. Brown, at telephone twenty four seventy, or Mr. J. W. or J. W. Brown at J. W. Brown's residence, four twenty five Main Street. Third, give your telephone number when the operator asks for it, so they know how to bill. A collect call is back in the day, you would say, you would call the operator and place a collect call, and then the other party would accept it or decline it, and then that was charged on their phone bill. So, transmitting messages. Uh, for Employees of the telephone company are forbidden to accept oral or written messages to be transmitted by an employee over the lines of the telephone company. Um... Attachments to telephones. To render satisfactory service, it is important the telephone company furnish and maintain all apparatus and equipment connected with its lines, except as provided in the tariffs, no line instrument appliance or apparatus not furnished by the telephone company shall be connected with, attached to, or in any way used in connection with facilities of the telephone company. So they are basically saying don't try to MacGyver your phone back then. Recording of telephone conversations. A short beep tone heard over the telephone about every 15 seconds indicates that the person 
with whom you're talking is recording your conversation by means of his electrical recording machine connected to the line. The beep signal is produced automatically by a device which connects the receiver to the telephone line and which is provided by the telephone company for your protection. Use of a recorder without this signal is unlawful. If you do not want a record made of what you're saying, ask the person with whom you are talking to disconnect his recording machine. When he disconnects his recorder, the signal is no longer heard. Now, what do you make of that? Nowadays, we're all about privacy, or at least we pretend to be. So, obviously, you know, recording phone calls is not something that would be talked about so casually. Um, in fact, the idea that someone could be recording you is kind of horrifying to a lot of people. But back then, not necessarily. This is before a lot of legislation had changed things. Advertising telephone numbers uh, gives you the advantages of um, using this phone book to advertise. And we'll get to that as we go through it. Telegrams by telephone. Yeah, you can telephone your telegrams. A telegram was uh, a communique sent by Western Union exclusively uh, by wire. And you would transmit a message. This was the predecessor to email. Uh, you went to a Western Union office, you sent a message to another party, um, and then it would be typed up on the other end, put into an envelope, and mailed to that person. And sometimes it could be sent through the telephone line. Uh, architects and builder service, telephone directories, just talking about how that's done. And it tells you how to use dial telephone and be cool. Um, the dial has... The dial has 10 openings and 10 figures, 1 through 9 and 0. One figure is associated with each dial opening. Some of the openings may also have letters on the dial. The letters will always be found in groups of three. For example, the letters A, B, C are found associated with the second opening and D, E, F with the third opening. See, it's actually explaining to you how to use your rotary phone. There were no touch tone phones at this time. If they had any at all, they were not widely available. You actually received your telephone from the phone company. That's another thing. At this time, in 1955, it was very uncommon for people to not purchase or receive their phone directly from the phone company. They didn't go to the store to buy a phone. That came later. Um, at this time, when you applied for your telephone service, the, the phone company would give you a phone and you had options of what kind of phone you could have a black one you might be able to they might have had different colors at this point i think they had a peach colored phone they had uh i mean there weren't very many colors to choose from to tell you the truth um they didn't have garfield phones or football phones or anything back then let's see and it tells you what ringing and busy signals are dialing the operator for assistance a coin box telephone back then i was a nickel um, party lines. Uh, I remember party lines. That was basically how you could have two or three people on the same call. Um, sometimes you had to share a phone line with your neighbors. I mean, it, sometimes you'd pick up your phone to make a call and you'd hear people talking. That was, that was the way it was. So, and I mean, so basically w the understanding from this is this was a whole different time period that I remember very clearly. Here's some other things I remember. Um, I remember something called storyline when I was a little kid. So I would dial a number and uh, a recorded story would be read for me. Uh, I remember things like that. They, there was a lot of things you could do with your phone back then. You had star 69 to see who called you. Um, you had 411. Well, there was a weather. I, th I think that was information, but there was also a weather line you could call. And I don't remember what that was, but, uh. Here we are now in the uh, Kosky Usko, Mississippi. Oh gosh, those of you in this town, help me out. I should have, I sort of learned the pronunciation before I started this video, so that's on me. Now, as we look through the phone numbers, take note at the number of digits you see. Now, some of them are followed by a letter, which meant that you, someone else, had that same four le numbers. So they would uh, follow it with a letter so you would get that that particular person. So there's that means that there's a number of other people who had 1173. So P 
people could pay to have their company name in bold text, like A and A Grocery Market, Jefferson, Adams Standard Service Station, Allen Tank Car Station, Allen's Drug Store, uh, Arkansas Fuel Oil Corporation, Atkinson and Lucas, uh, Adela Butane, uh, Adela Company. Adela County. So this must be Adela County or Atala, depending on where you live. Adela or Atala. I think in Alabama we say Atala. Um, Auto Parts. Uh, okay. Barnes and D. Barnes A. D. R. Okay. Um, that means he was a doctor. A lot of times physicians would have their title behind their name in phone books. Same with preachers and other people. So you also see that too. Or, sci or like even if they're a scientist, they might even have that. Um, Bell's Brickyard, Bell's Cafe, Bell's Grocery. Probably, yeah, they're all on Jackson. So they're probably all. <laughs> we had, a, when I lived in a town in Chico, Texas, we had Younger's, they had, they had a restaurant and a video arcade and a grocery store all in one place. Black and white store. Um, Braswell Oil Company. Brantley Supermarket. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Chapman's Armstrong Tire Service. Central Mississippi. Crawley and Brooks. City Cleaners. City Drug Store. And you, you see the names, too, of the people. Most of these people are, have long left us. Crittenden Crowder, Davis Appliance Company, Dean John Lee Cafe, Delta Motor Line, Donald's Flower Shop, Dottie Furniture Store, Dottie's Television Service, Tractor Companies, Fairground Laundry, Falconer's Appliances. Now, another thing, a lot of these in bold are businesses, but not necessarily all of the businesses are in bold. They paid extra for that, and they may or may not be in the yellow pages section of the phone book coming up. Hammond Hardware Company, Harvey Way Drugstore, um, Hemp Hill Hotel Oleander. Is the only I believe it's the only hotel in this area too. Hutchinson's Texaco Station, Ivy's Plumbing. Jitney Jungle Grocery. Jordan Auto Company, Jordan Chevrolet, Jordan Funeral Home. Uh, and it says, if no answer, call. They give you another number to call. Lee Funeral Home. Love's Greenhouse, Lucille's Beauty Shop, Lavelle Dairy Products, McKinney Livestock, Sale Barn, Meeks Pharmacy, Merchants and Farmers Bank, Midtown Motor Company, Miss Valley Gas Company, Mitchell's Mike Sheet Metal Shop, Morgan & Morgan, The Doggone Lawyers, yeah, they're still advertising all the time. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen a Morgan & Morgan commercial, you don't live in the United States. Uh, or Morgan & Morgan billboard. Odorless dry cleaners. Uh, rather than the smelly dry cleaners. <laughs> uh Pettit's Auto Supply, Pickle Coleman, Planters Oil Mill, The Picks Theater, 
Potts Hugh Motor Company, Pilates Welding and Machine Shop, Ray Emmett, Doctor. Someone had uh, changed this number here for the rat lifts in pencil. Because sometimes that number will change for what they got. And I guess the rat lifts were getting hounded by somebody and changed their number. Or maybe they moved. Um, Scarborough Lumber. Sears Roebuck and Company. So they actually had Sears in town. Alan Simmons. Southern Bell. Standard Oil. Oh, uh, Starlight Drive-In Theater. So, drive-in theaters were a big thing back in the 50s. I, they were a big thing when I was a kid, too, in the 70s and 80s. They had made a bit of a comeback at that time, but it didn't last. Vogue Beauty Shop. WKOZ Broadcasting. Western Auto Associates Store, Winkler's Furniture. And then down here is a note section. So if numbers changed or if there's a new number, you could jot it down right here. Now we have, for Ethel, they have their own section. Allen Chevrolet. And see, there's not a lot going on at Ethel. In McCool, they got their own section. They got City Cafe. It's just called City Cafe. There's not a lot of folks who live in McCool here. And then in Weir, Merchants and Bank Branch, and they got a beauty shop. Uh, so that wraps up that part of the, 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 the personal part. See, and then to signify that, there's a little bit of artwork here. Now we get to a calendar for your convenience. It gives an extension for a birthday present. It says give an extension for a birthday present. What they mean by this picture is instead of just having a phone in your living room, put a phone in your daughter's bedroom or something like that. That's exactly what they're showing here. This is obviously a girl's bedroom with the two lamps on the and the makeup mirror. So 1955, 1956, 1954. So you have a last year's calendar, next year's calendar, and this year's calendar. November 5th, 1955 was a Saturday. Uh, every day, make the classified your shopping guide. Did you ever stop to think what you get for your telephone dollar? In a single day, you may use your telephone many times to run errands, make appointments, visit a neighbor down the block, handle matters of business, and receive an important call from someone miles away. In the course of a month, you repeat this performance many times, day and night, around the clock, in good weather and bad. The telephone serves you, saving time and steps, work and worry, enriching life for all the family. And they have a little picture here. It shows this lady, and she's got a bunch of bills on her desk. And she talked to a nurse. She talked to her mom. She talked to a chef. She talked to a cab, a cabbie, a fireman, and her little girl. So she's had a busy day. Shop the easy way in the yellow pages. They are helping others to solve buying problems. They will help you when you want. To find the nearest dealer. To find a business or professional name or address. To obtain a list of dealers. To find a well-known brand of products or authorized service. To get prices or estimates. To find a particular article or service in an emergency or in a hurry. To find an infrequently used product or service. To find a business telephone number more easily. To get information about products and services, business hours, deliveries, credit terms, and special services. So, there's a lot going on here. And uh, now we get to the fun part of the phone book, the yellow pages. Now, this time... They weren't printed in yellow unless you count this old faded paper, but later on, as you'll see, they were in fact printed in yellow to separate, to quickly separate this business section with the residential section. So 
and we can start now i'm going to warn you right now you will see some signs of segregation because that for that's what existed back then um and it would existed for certain services like for example uh funeral funeral directors so um you had funeral directors here And then you had funeral directors, and they put colored right here. So, and look at some of, look how this is described. Thoughtfulness, sincere funeral service, a lady attendant, a bureau insurance, day or night. So, they, stuff you just wouldn't see nowadays. Um, so, let's start looking through the yellow pages. Um, accountants, CPAs, county services, adding machines. We didn't have computers back then, obviously. There was a Jordan Funeral Home, agricultural implements, air conditioners, uh, air, room air conditioners, air conditioning equipment supplies. And if I live in the deep south, it gets pretty doggone hot down here. Air conditioning was a big deal. Ambulance service, Jordan Funeral Home again. Ammonia, a whole listing for ammonia. Buyers using these yellow pages are prospects too valuable to lose. Proper representation here brings them to you. And it's funny that they called them the yellow pages, but they did not yet print them on yellow paper, which I think is very funny. Um, amusements. There's a golf club. Uh, associations, American Red Cross. Uh, athletic goods, attorneys, Crawley and Brooks. Morgan and Morgan, of course, the ambulance service, no funeral home, automobile agencies and dealers, Chevrolet authorized sales and service, uh, Chrysler Plymouth sales and service, Ford authorized sales and service, H&T Motor Company, automobile agencies and dealers, uh, Landra Mercury, Jackson Doney Motor Company, Jordan Chevrolet, Mercury Sales and Service for your Mercury car, Mid State Motor Company, Oldsmobile, Rocket Hydromatic, Oldsmobile has both. Uh, more for you, that's a big ad for the Mercury place. Um, the Packard, if you had a Packard car, a Pontiac place. And then we had the, the privately owned motor companies, Studebaker Place, uh, Allen Chevrolet, and then we got used autos right here, OK used cars. That OK logo was very common when I was a little kid to see that. I don't see it anymore, so I guess that, that association is gone. Uh, auto body repair, automobile equipment, parts. Now you can avoid wearing some shop worry some shopping trips by looking in the classified telephone directory. It tells you where you can buy the things you need. So, and keep in mind, uh, this was nineteen fifty five. So this was relatively modern efficiency you're holding right here. This is post World War Two. You know we we've come a long way, and the telephone is a is a modern tool and a, a, a means of communication that you know is, is still relatively new uh so you got your napa auto parts fisher's used parts roby's auto service um more used cars a lot of automotive stuff going on here seat covers maintaining your car you know you wanted to keep those seat covers um Truck dealers, record services. Now we get into some different things. A bakery, a taller bakery, uh, Nell's pastry shop, banks. There's merchants and farmers. It's pretty much in all the towns. The, uh, that was the main bank here. Back then, you didn't see 25,000 banks in a town like you do nowadays. You got a barber shop. You got Audi's barber shop. You got Nell's barber shop. You got Nell's pastry shop. Those are big ad. We specialize in wedding, birthday, and party cakes. 
Hot pies and donuts daily. That sounds good. Batteries. Uh, you could go to Covington's Golf Service Station. Here's the deal. You're looking for a specific item. You would look and say you wanted batteries. It would direct you to the service station. But that told you is you could go to that service station to find batteries. That doesn't mean that's all they sell. But what they are doing is they're sorting out commonly sought after items by where you could quickly find them. So, because you don't really think of a service station as your one-stop shop for batteries, but that told you where to go. Uh, beauty shops, and we see beauty shops colored. Um, Bell's Beauty Shop, Mildred's Beauty Shop, Weatherspoon Beauty Shop. So, you had them split up. And you, as you will see during this time in the 50s, services that that were more or less, you could say, personal were segregated however like restaurants and cafes often would have two sections um for so but some services were strictly for white people and some services were strictly for people of color at that time so that is how that was done and um now look at this hang up gently Thoughtless slamming of the receiver may appear discourteous to the person with whom you have been talking. You don't mean it, of course, but it may leave the wrong impression. So they're actually giving you etiquette tips here, which is another thing you really wouldn't see nowadays because – and we certainly don't care about being, you know, polite by and large, it seems like. So I find that very interesting that people worried about such things. They – um, it was a different time period. Um – Dr. Pepper bottlers right here. Builder supplies, building materials. There's the Merchants of Farmers Bank ad right here. Um, more building materials, Butler Steel Buildings, bus lines, bus manufacturers, more building materials. Uh, asbestos. Siding because you know we didn't know at that time that it was quite dangerous. Uh, cable companies, cash registers, CPAs, chamber of commerce, chiropractors. So there was swinger and swinger with the chiropractors in town, Baptist churches, uh, churches Catholic, Church of Christ, Methodist, Presbyterian. As you can see, the majority of the churches are Baptist in this section of Mississippi. And if you know much about the South, you'll know that Louisiana and Mississippi also have heavily, and Alabama have heavily Catholic parts too. Um, but we all, you know, we also have parts that are heavily Baptist. Uh, cleaners, go to the church of your choice. Take someone with you. You'll both be richer for it. Sponsored by Southern Bell and Telephone Company. They wouldn't sponsor that nowadays. See, different time, a different world. Things have changed. Um, city cleaners, craft dry cleaners, McColl dry cleaners. Uh, Fred Abel, ready mix concrete. Fred Abel, not Fred Abel. Ready mix again. General Contractors, Planters, Oil Mill, Cotton Seed and Soybean Products. I imagine that might be the same company that own Planters. I, I don't know, though, honestly. But I do know that peanut is used in crop rotation because if you grow cotton, it strips the soil because it's a, it's a very rough, fibrous plant. And you would literally grow peanuts after you harvested your cotton. And then you wouldn't harvest the peanuts, rather you would plow them into the soil and it would add nitrogen back into the soil. So Planters probably is the same company that we know of now that sells peanuts. Um, compressed companies, concrete, corn mills, cotton, cotton seed products. Cotton was the big industry of Mississippi back in the 50s. Um, it still to a great extent is if you go to the roll parts, dairy products, credit reporting, dentists, department stores, doctors, dog and cat hospitals, overhead doors, 
draft boards. Back then there was a draft. What that meant is when you applied for selective service, you could and possibly would get drafted into the military. The draft ended uh oh uh, nineteen early seventies. I can't remember what year it was. Uh druggist, dry goods. What was dry goods? Well, we didn't have Walmarts and Kmarts back then, so we had stores. Okay, you had your grocery store, you had your dry goods store. And a dry goods store sold the other things that you find in a Walmart. For example, board games, uh, like uh, things, you know, things around your house, uh, plant stuff, end tables, um, Things that, when they literally mean dry goods, not things that you could take home, durable products, they wouldn't decompose. Things for your house, housewares and so forth. Cutlery, plates. Uh, they had a small selection of everything. They usually had a toy section. We had a dry goods store when I lived in Chico, Texas. We didn't have anything like a Walmart or nothing. So at the dry goods store, I it was my toy section as a kid. So what kind of toys they have, like they had board games like Clue and Monopoly. They would have like toys like color forms, the little things, little stickers you would stick. They had shrinky dinks. They might possibly have action figures. Um, they'd have blocks. Um, they'd have uh, basic selection toys. Like one time I went to a Dragon store in North Texas and they had Tron action figures, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Frigidaire appliances, hot point electric appliances, Kelvinator, Maytag appliances, uh, electric contractors, electric power and light companies, electric motors, employment agencies, gas engineers, um, farms, farm equipment, exterminating, fumigating, filling stations what we used to call them for or we call them service stations five and ten cent stores uh that's what we call dollar general now um florists flower mills fluorescent lighting freight frozen foods locker service frozen custards uh bizoni dixie cream if you want to get a frozen custard and then we get i already showed you the funeral director part to sort of illustrate the point about segregation at that time uh Furnaces, Ream, that you might recognize some of these logos. Lennox and Ream still using the same logo today. Furniture, uh, garages, gas appliances, gas companies, butane gas. Then we get to general merchandising. Uh, this general merchandise, uh, general store basically uh, would have uh, brooms and uh you know vacuums uh once again you know like plates spoons forks knives stuff like placemats gift shops uh what would what would you find in a gift shop in 1955 in a small town um well a gift shop might have uh books it might have cards or postcards it might have stationary sets it might have monogram or ways to buy monogrammed things. It might have boxed pens or pencils. Those were typical gifts from in the nineteen fifties that you would give. Um, they would probably have a service to personalize gifts for you while you were there. Government offices, grocers, um, Grocery Market, Adams Street Grocers, Meat Department. They had a number for the meat department. Brantley Supermarket, a complete line of groceries, live and dressed poetry. So you could buy live chickens there. Or you, I mean, or you'd say, uh, slaughter the chicken for me and, and pluck it and so I can cook it tonight. Or whatever. Or I want a fryer hen. Or I want a hen for, for soup or whatever. Um, p Sanders Purity Store, self service grocery. So this is where you pick. This is where you got your food if you didn't grow it or raise it yourself. Grocery delivery, meat, A and A grocery market, fresh produce, fancy and staple groceries, flour and feed. 
And we get to heating, hospitals, animal hospitals, hotels. Not a lot of hotels here. Just one, Oleander Hotel. Mrs. Ava Parham Manager. Dial 112. Only hotel in town. Uh, ice, insurance, burial insurance, general insurance, jewelers, junk. Uh, dental laboratories, laundries. Lawyers, lawnmowers, livestock, loans, lumber, machine shops, mail order houses. Sears Roebuck and Company. A mail order house is you would literally buy something from the catalog and have it sent. Before Amazon, that's what you had. You had the Sears Roebuck catalog. And I know if you if you go to my channel a lot, you know I do lots of reviews of catalogs. So you should see those too. Evaporated milk, monuments, mortgages, real estate, motels, motion picture film libraries. Uh, Southern Bell Telephone tel and Telegraph Company. Telephone films, entertaining, educational, 16 millimeter sound motion pictures available free upon advance notice for business, school, social, or civic groups. Catalog on request. So these were film strips, not film strips, but... Films for classes, churches, etc. Or even that you could take home and rent a, a projector and you might want to play a film. They might even have a movie. And yes, I do remember this. I even remember us renting the projector. This was way back. But I remember renting a projector and we were watching films about fire safety because my dad was in the fire department. And uh, I remember they were a little traumatizing. <laughs> so... Um, they were fairly graphic. Motor freight lines, musical instruments, newspapers, nitrogen, occultists, see physicians and surgeons. <laughs> That's palm readers, by the way, or tarot card readers. You still find plenty of them down here. Um, uh, oils, optometrists, outboard motors, ornamental iron. Um, that would be, you ever drive through New Orleans and see the iron railings and so forth? That's exactly what that is. Or, or fencing, gates, stuff like that is ornamental iron. You don't really see that too much nowadays. Photographers, you don't really see. Do we even need cameras nowadays with these cell phones? Physicians and surgeons. I wonder if there's any occultists here. And they, should, you know, they've gone to college. Internal medicine. So you have your physicians. Uh, music. There's a jukebox. Uh, pianos. Planing mills. Pipeline companies. Furniture company. Robert E. Lee Refrigeration Company. He's even got a little picture of, of uh, Robert E. Lee there. Um, plumbers. Police department. Post offices. Printers. Radio broadcasting stations and companies, radio dealers, radio services, railroads, refrigerating equipment, uh, refrigeration, electric, restaurants, B&F Grill, Bell's Cafe, Continental Trailways Incorporated, Dean John Lee Cafe, The Snack Bar, Tuckaway Diner, Tyler's Restaurant, Vickers Coffee Shop, The City Cafe in McCool, uh... Service station, seat covers, seed. There's the different schools. You could have the number directly to the cafeteria, the high school, the band hall, the lower elementary, the principal's office. See how all that worked? Uh, Covington's Golf Service Station, Flanagan Standard Service Station, Standard Oil, um... Washing, polishing, batteries, tires. Here's another thing. In the 50s, and you might, if you've seen Back to the Future, you might remember the scene. Do you remember when the car pulls into the service station and like a whole, like, just platoon of, of men run out there and like check the tires and clean the windshield and check the oil? And I mean, just full service. They pump the gas free. They're all wearing uniforms. That's what you could expect back then. It was a different time. You didn't pump your own gas. I mean, things have changed so much. Nowadays, nowadays we're checking our own groceries now. 
we're bagging it, we're scanning and bagging our own groceries. There will be pretty soon a generation that don't even remember what it was like to have someone actually scan and bag your groceries for you because it's getting more and more where they're replacing people with anything they can to save money so they don't have to pay people's salaries. And all of those people back then had jobs. When we automate so many things, people are losing jobs. It's really kind of a shame because those are all jobs people could have had. But they've basically conditioned us not to expect service anymore. They've conditioned us to be fine with less. So I find that very interesting. Um, standard oil, shell oil, all the gas stations, sewing machines, sheet metal. Shoe repair. This is another interesting thing. And you do occasionally still see this. But in the old days, buying a pair of shoes was a several years purchase. You bought your shoes and you would get them repaired rather than buy new ones because it was such a pain to go and buy new shoes. So, um, yeah, they they would get them repaired a lot. Uh, surgeons, tax matters, taxi cabs. Telegraph companies, rental signs, outdoor advertising, truck lettering, windows, walls, road signs, show cards, cutout letter signs, banners, taxi service, deluxe cab stand, um, telephone automatic answering service. Yeah, this was a service where and many, many people had an answering service. So if they were a business person, they had a day job or whatever. The answer service would collect and then they would come home and they dial a number and they get all their messages. So, you know, we didn't have voicemail or anything like that. We didn't have the answering machines like we had in the 80s. Because in the 80s, I remember we had an answering machine that had a, a cassette tape in it and it played a message. One tape was there to play a message and the other tape recorded the uh, messages for us. So, um, Faulkner's Appliance Store, Furniture, uh, Telephone Apparatus, Telephone Companies, Television Receivers. Okay, a television receiver is a television. That, that they, you know, the big, the, the long name is, you know, you got a, t a TV in your home, this big, enormous piece of furniture with a small screen in black and white. And uh, it was wood done up, very ornate. And uh, that received your television signal and you would watch TV. You'd watch your shows at home. So it's very, very interesting. I, if you watch my channel, you know, I review a lot of TV guides from the 50s to show you the kind of programming that was on TV back then. Uh, termite control. Textile manufacturers. Theaters. Pix Theater. Starlight Drive-In and the Strand Theater. So there's three places to watch movies. Unless one of those is actually a live theater, which may very well be the case. Covington, Covington's Golf Service Station, they do tires. BF Goodrich Tires. Uh, whatever or whomever you need. Antiques, buttons, carpenters, or dentists. They're conveniently listed with name, address, telephone number. Make it a habit to look in the yellow pages. Uh... Tourist courts, tombs, recapping and retreading of tires. Here's a, they didn't, I didn't see here, but tourist courts. Now we saw hotels, but these are, and we don't, I don't believe the word motel. Oh yeah, we have motels. It says see tourist courts. So here's the deal. We had hotels and then we had what were, becoming motels a hotel was a building you walked into they had a lobby you checked in and you took an elevator to your room or you took the stairs and it was within that building a tourist court is a place where you would drive up and park outside of your room and usually had an outside door that was uh what we called motels or tourist courts and i have seen in in the re recent times that hotels are resurging back and we see less motels um, but in the 50s motels became all the rage and from the 50s through probably the or, or, you know early 2000s it was still motels 
So in this tourist court, you could expect on uh, Mississippi Highway 12, one block west of junction with Highway 35, air-conditioned, forced air heating, Simmons Beauty Rest mattresses. So, so this was your motel room amenities. So you got tractors, trailers, motor trucks, transfer companies, trucking, upholstering, refinishing, and repairing, typewriters, variety stores, Ben Franklin stores. Uh, they last I saw they still exist. You can still find them occasionally. It, it, it's kind of like a Hobby Lobby, but it's also kind of like an old time dry goods store because it has. A lot of hobby stuff, but it also had, just has regular stuff, you know, like pens and notebooks and journals and and uh, candles and all the crap that you find in a dry goods store. Let's see, veterinarians, waffle shops, see restaurants, washing machines, water heaters, welding, women's apparel, yard goods, welding, welding, welding. Then you got, in the very end, you have your frequently called numbers, the little courtesy section right here, so you don't have to look it up all the time. So then one more ad, and then you got the high price ads here. They paid top dollar to get on the cover. City Cleaners, Allen Chevrolet, 24-hour wrecking service. Uh, don't leave the receiver off the hook. Many people forget to hang up the receiver when they finish talking. Whenever you do this, you put your telephone out of order until you replace the receiver or telephone trouble man is sent to replace it for you. Now, later on, they made a very loud uh, beeping sound that would could be heard uh, all across the house. So if you if you didn't hang up the phone, it would go uh, 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 real loud, and I don't think they did it back then. So here is... A little map kind of illustrating how your phone can connect to all these different places and look look at the comparative size to the phone books so this is a more modern phone book this is essentially how they looked until the end um uh, i think i saw a phone book maybe five or six years ago we haven't had a landline in a long time but uh so most of you i'm sure remember phone books and just take note of how they've changed. This is your 1979 Yellow Pages. See? And I think it's really interesting to look at uh, how things have changed. Another thing, more variety. I mean, this is obviously a bigger place, but you know, back then you didn't see what do you find in a small town now you know you're going to find a chinese restaurant you'll find a mexican restaurant there'll be a mcdonald's a kfc a taco bell whatever you didn't see any of that then you really didn't see a lot of that here either like if we go to restaurants i mean that's a, a relatively modern thing uh it's just interesting because these books to me more than anything else are a chronicle of history when whether and I also look at catalogs, I look at TV guides. I can chart history better with these books because this is primary source um, archived history. We can see the kind of restaurants they had. Big Mac's Barbecue, Bison's Vending, Bob's Barbecue, Bonanza, Sirloin, uh, Burger Chick, Burger King. They had a. They had a. See the circle T. They had some Mexican restaurants. Of course, this is Texas. The Greek Connect. They actually had a Greek restaurant and a dis supper club and disco here in in Victoria, Texas, which is crazy. But nineteen seventy nine, not too crazy. Steinhaus Garten, German beer garden. <laughs> so Victoria, Texas, was pretty uh, cosmopolitan. With their restaurants. They had a Holiday Inn restaurant. But back then, what did you see? You saw a city cafe. Like Jay's Restaurant. Mom's Diner. You know, just very small amount of dining options. Say you're, you're young and you want to take your girlfriend on a date. Where are you going to take her? Not very many choices back in 1955. A lot changed 
in this is uh 24 years so um i mean a lot has changed really and uh I mean, it's interesting how this went from this and this small selection of things. And maybe I'm over hammering this point, but to me, I just find it so crazy. Like there was one motel and there's one hotel and here by 1979. And I know this is a bigger town. It's not a total com comparison, but still you can imagine when you go through a small town anyway, they're going to have more stuff nowadays, even the the smallest towns i mean now granted there's some that don't have nothing in them but like there's just so much more all these hotels i mean the consumer culture really expanded so much between these time periods and a lot of that too is what do you see when you look at this you see a greater emphasis on service you see a greater emph emphasis on quality etiquette and so forth and it wasn't all commercial because they knew many people in 1955 were self-sufficient many people grew their own food many people uh raised their own meat they made their own clothing they made their own music they uh, you know they the only services they might need would be um buying staple seed buying farming implements you know, putting an air conditioner in their house, stuff like that. It's very interesting to see how, I guess my point that I'm taking a million miles to get to is we were much more self-sufficient in 1955. And by 1979, you already see how businesses were basically, for a fee, taking on all the aspects of our life. And maybe that is why so many of us now in 2023 feel so many times like we don't have so much purpose because so many things are taking care of us for us at that same time too we are going back to like i was saying we're going back to like self-check and we're we're not getting the service anymore but we're still paying for someone to provide the things so and when before you got service now you're just getting the thing and you don't know how to make the thing anymore so we're just kind of become more ignorant and more dependent and less self-sufficient and it's it is kind of interesting and i'm not saying this to be depressing i'm just saying how the times have changed i find it very interesting and i rambled a lot so anyway thank you so much for continuing to watch my channel uh I, and i appreciate all of you i got a lot of comments to answer y'all mean a lot to me um I'm sure those of you under completely understand that sometimes you just can't be there as much as I wanted to make videos, but I'm coming back with a lot of different things I want to show you, a lot of different ideas, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your comments again. So, uh, as always, um, if you like my channel, uh, please subscribe and leave a comment. Uh, I really do appreciate all of you. Some of y'all have said some things that really made a, made a difference for me during the last few uh, terrible weeks I've had. And some of you said some really kind things. So I, I appreciate all of you. And I will respond personally before too long. And uh, so anyway, until next time, bye.